Here we have a few examples of smart tweezers. Over the uh, last few years I've accumulated a few examples and uh, thought we'd take a quick look at them. This is the first set I, I got, the uh, Xtech RC100. Then I ended up with the Maztec 8910. Recently I came across the Global Specialties. I think this is the LCR58 model. And what I'm going to do is uh, kind of check them against uh, my older uh, IET DE5000 that I've had for a few years. And today we'll just look at the first model that I got, which was the Xtech RC100. A pretty simple device. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot. It will do resistance and capacitance. Oh, I think that's about it. I think it does diodes too, but I've not really used that function much. Let's take a quick look and compare it and see how it works out uh, against the larger LCR. Not sure that there's uh, really much to say about this little guy. It uh, comes in a handy uh, you know, case with a cover and it's an easy enough uh, display to read. You're going to get some glare from all the lights uh, today. Um, it has a diode resistance in up to mega ohms and capacitance into the uh, well it says one picofarad uh, resolution but we'll see how that goes uh, it runs on two ag13 batteries or uh, also known as lr44s and it runs for quite a while on those for the tests we're going to use a small set of resistors or sorry inductors and uh, capacitors and a couple of uh, diodes that I have set up on a small breakout board here. These are all pretty much uh, 802s, I believe, or sorry, 805s size. Uh, the diodes or LEDs are pretty small, though. And then uh, for additional uh, tests for resistors, we're going to use some off of a, uh, I think this was a DMM Check Plus that I got from uh, Doug Malone and his off of his site, voltagestandard.com. And these resistors are very... Uh, stable and so we'll use those first off we're going to check the values from the according to the DE5000 and see how close any of these are these uh, diode these uh, capacitors are came out of a cheap um, SMD kit set so I don't think that they're necessarily especially the larger values are going to be all that accurate we'll start with the inductors Trying to do this all left-handed. This should be a 47 microhenry inductor. And it comes out a little high. Not a surprise. 55.5. Uh, the next should be a 15 microhenry. Here we go, 15.6. I'm running these at uh, 1 kilohertz, which is a pretty s common uh, test frequency, especially for the uh, cheaper uh, LCR, those will typically only often only go to one kilohertz, sometimes ten, and then 4.7 microhenries, and that comes out as uh, 4.8 on the LCR, so that's great. Let's do the uh, three capacitors. The first should be, well, it's supposed to be a 22 microfarad. We're showing up as 16.9. Uh, well, not sure. Is that uh, that is just within 20%, which is probably what they were spec'd at. The next should be a uh, 100 nanofarad. This is another pretty common size that I use all the time. That's coming a really close, 99.4. And another common size is around 22 uh, picofarads for say crystals and such, and that shows 23. So the LCR is coming in, uh, the DE5000 is coming in very close, except a little low at 16.9 uh, on the 22 microfarad, and a little high, 55.5 on the 47 microhenry. On the first capacitor for 22 uh, microfarads, let's take a look and see if we can get a decent value, get this to all show on camera and be readable. There we go. 21.4, so very close. That's pretty good. And for 100 nanofarads, we're showing 99.4. Wow, almost exactly what the uh, IET had. And we also have the little 22 pico. Well, we're showing uh, 14 uh, picofarads for that. 
on the screen. So that's probably uh, probably pretty good. That's about as good as I can uh, hope for for something like this. And this does have a diode test. Let's try that out. Here we have a low current red LED. I'm not sure if I've got the polarity right. No, it's not not testing that at all. Let's try the green one here. I may have to reverse the polarity on these to get it to work. No, nothing on the green. Let's try that red LED again. Uh, nothing. Nothing. So the diode check on this is not very good. Let's check out the uh, details on that. Let's see what kind of voltage this uh, uses for its diode check. Curious if it's reasonable or not. So we have it out on diode check and we're showing uh, 1.5 volts. So mm, that's probably why it can't really pick up a red LED even, even a low current red LED. That's too bad. It'd be nice if that worked. And one of the problems one can get with these probes on these, on these types of devices is that uh, they can become magnetized. And so what we're going to do is just uh, show this with a uh, screwdriver and a magnetized screwdriver and what can happen. So you're trying to let go of the little component, but it's, it's not happening. So that could be a real problem. And we'll check each of these. So for the uh, RC100 up front, is it magnetized? Nope. No magnetic effect. Let's see if we can, oh, yep, there we go. Everything sticks to it. Let's see if we can magnetize them in here. I'm going to try and drag those up and down on the magnetize plate. Nope. No problem at all. No problem at all with that. That's great. So the RC100 uh, does, passes the uh, non-magnetic test. Now to check resistance, I'm going to go ahead and use the 1272A. It's pretty accurate. And against the voltage standard uh, from voltagestandard.com, this I think is where I got this, and uh, it's a DMM check. And so here's a 100 ohm resistor showing at 100.00, a 1K showing at 1K plus or minus a tiny little bit. We have a 10K resistor showing in at uh, 10K plus or minus a few ohms. And again, a 100K, again, coming in right about on target. So about as good as it gets. Let's see how the RC100 and the others compare against that. We'll just switch over to the resistance mode and see what we, uh, see what we get. 100 ohms. A little hard to read that maybe. 1K, right on the money. 10K, right just as good as it gets. And how about 100K? 99.9. .9. Well, again, pretty much right on the money. So no complaints really about this little guy, except that it, it uh, doesn't have a very good diode check and it doesn't do current or it doesn't do inductors. And otherwise, it seems to be an okay device. I've used it some. Now, if you notice, these tips really are not all that great. They're flat. Uh, they don't they kind of bend a little bit. So they never really did work very well except for quick checks of things, but I couldn't really use them for placing components at all. And that would be nice to do. So here we have the uh, next device, the Maztec 8910, and it's much better than the RC100 in pretty much every way. It uh, comes in a decent little uh, hard case, a couple of uh, spare tips here that we can put on. Uh, they're the same style, though they're not you know, curved or something like that. This device is a yeah, 3,000 count uh, meter, and it will uh, measure resistance, capacitance, and diodes as well, just just like the uh, for the RC100. But it does have uh, nicer tweezers. Well, sort of nicer tweezers. See if you can spot the problem here with this thing. The uh, tweezers from the factory don't match up. So before I make any progress on testing this, I'll have to uh, fix that up. All right, 
a little uh, work with a precision screwdriver and now the tips uh, meet up properly. Let's try them out. All right, let's set it. It's uh, set up for capacitance. 22 microfarads comes in at about 21. Okay, not too bad. Let's try 100. And it responds really quickly, actually. Um, faster than the uh, X-Tech did, and we're right at 100. And then we've got the uh, 22 picofarad. Sure enough, 22 right on the dot. Can't complain about that at all. Let's try the diode function. And see if we can't light something up. There we go. Hard to see, but right there on the little red LED does light up. And it's showing, we're showing 1.367 volts. That's probably about right. Now let's try the green LED, see if that works or not. Well, it's not really lighting it up, but it is measuring 1.559 volts as the drop across the uh, green LED, but can't really see the LED light up at all. Let's see what voltage this thing puts out in order to take that measurement. All right, let's see what voltage we're using. Ah, 2.958, so uh, 3 volts out of the uh, Mastec in order to uh, check the diodes, and that is why we're able to test, at least measure out the LEDs and get a little red one to glow. So pretty good on the diode check. I like that. And to test the resistance, we'll start with the simple 100 ohm resistor. And we're showing 100.2, 100 .0, so right on the money. For the 1K, we're showing 998 ohms, so very good there. Again, for 10K, 9.99, .99, so real accurate. And finally, on the 100K, 100.2. So, very accurate. I uh, can't complain at all about that for the resistance test. Let's see if these uh, tips are magnetic or not. They seem uh, pretty stiff. They're certainly very, very uh, sturdy. Hopefully, they're brass or uh, something non-magnetic. So, we'll try magnetizing these tips. So if we can get it to stick. Now let's see if we can get that to stick magnetically. Nope. It works reasonably well as a pair of tweezers, except maybe when I do it left-handed. Nope. No magnetic attraction at all. So that's great. That works out. So the first couple sets of tweezers that I have uh, had are pretty... Are this was okay. It was certainly all right for some years ago, but not that great. The uh, Mastex had worked pretty well. These tips do uh, tend to drift out of alignment, though. I hadn't used them for a while, and they had uh, shifted since I had last used them. Somehow I had bumped them. Uh, but they also just don't by inherently line up all that well. But it does work pretty well, So it's and it's done all right. I don't haven't used it a lot. But I'm looking at doing a lot more SMD work uh, with smaller going down from 805s down into the uh, 0603s. So it'd be nice to have a good set of uh, measurement tweezers. And so we'll look at the global specialties in the next video.